Our calendar is just a mess. It's a very complicated mismatch of different cycles and different lengths of time. And every once in a while we have to make an adjustment to those lengths of time uh, to, to make things match. And one way we do that is every once in a while adding an extra day to our calendar. And that extra day is February 29th. And when we have an extra day, we call that year a leap year. So there are two fundamental units of time that we use that are tied to actual physical events. One is the day, and that's the time it takes for the Earth to make one rotation around its axis. The other is the year, and that's the time it takes the Earth to make one revolution in its orbit around the Sun. Every other unit we use, the week, the second, uh, the hour, is fairly arbitrary, but those two are tied to actual physical events. In a more well-behaved universe, our calendar would be a lot easier to deal with if 365 of these exactly matched one of those. But of course, that's not the way it works. Actually, uh, our year is made up of about 365 and a quarter days. That means that every time the Earth has gone round the Sun once, it's actually rotated 365 and a quarter times. If we rotate 365 and a quarter times every year, but we're only counting 365 of them in a year, that means every four years we've got an extra day that hasn't appeared in our calendar. So we have to put it back in, and that's where February 29th comes in. But that's not quite enough. The number of days in a year is not exactly 365 and six hours. It's 365 five hours, 49 minutes, and 16 seconds. That means if we do what I just said, by the end of 100 years, we've accumulated too much time in our calendar, and now we need to take a full day away. So every 100 years, on a year that would have been a leap year, going by the four-year rule, we skip one, and we take away that extra day. So every time the year is divisible by 100, that means 1900, 2000, 2100, we, we skip the leap year. And so on those years, February has 28 days and not 29 days. Except that's still not quite right. It was an extra uh, bit that we need to correct again, because now every 400 years, we've missed an extra day. So now every 400 years, we reverse that rule and we add the leap year back in. So this becomes very complicated, but the fundamental rule is, for a given year, if the year is divisible by four, then it's a leap year. Unless the year is divisible by 100, in which case it's not a leap year. Unless the year is divisible by 400, in which case it's a leap year, and we have February 29th. The mismatch between the rotation of the Earth and the revolution around the Sun is such that that extra amount of time is taken care of fairly to a fairly high precision by all these actual corrections. In actual fact, it still means that we will need an extra correction at the end of 3,200 years, but that's not actually built into our calendar. We stop at the end of 400 years in these corrections. Oh, astronomers are used to dealing with all sorts of um, not very convenient measurement systems. That's unfortunately the legacy of our very historical science. So we are used to dealing with this. And if we need to calculate the number of days that have passed between two dates, uh, it, it does become very complicated if you have to calculate how many months and how many days in that month and whether there are leap years involved. We simplify that by using our own calendar for, for passage of time known as Julian date. And all that is is a single number that counts the number of days that have gone by since a very distant date in the past. The zero point of that calendar is January 1st, Monday, January 1st, 4713 BC, 12 noon, Greenwich Mean Time. And of course, being here in Nottingham, uh, that's our time zone, the Greenwich, we're in the same time zone as the Greenwich Meridian. By that reckoning, February 29th, 2012, is Julian date 2455987. Yes, <laughs> got it right. <laughs> you can add a decimal place after that date, which records purely the decimal fraction of the day that's gone by. But one Julian date 
is equal to one, one day. So if you hear Julian date that ends with a 0.5, that means half a day has passed in addition to the, the full day that it's counting. Yes, this is going to sound familiar to a lot of people because, of course, in the Star Trek universe, um, you often hear Captain's Log, Stardate 2455.73, um, which is a similar kind of concept. Um, but the Star Trek writers and producers deliberately didn't make it uh, an official fast, fast and fixed rule as to what a star date uh, meant so that they could factor in all of the different concepts like speed of travel and different parts of the galaxy and that sort of thing. So star date is not the same as Julian date, no. So normally I would probably record the date of an observation as April 3rd, 2010, something like that, because the work I do is not particularly time critical. However, if you're recording something like a gamma ray burst or a periodic event like the transit of a planet, then a Julian date would be given to a very high precision. So having just said that I don't use Julian dates very often, uh, here's a paper that I wrote where I did use it. So here I've made a plot with Julian date, but I've subtracted all of the, 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 the large part of the number just to leave uh, the, 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 the cumulative number of days here. And so you can easily see that we've gone from 545 to 560, which is 15 days. And that's a lot easier than saying we've gone from January 24 to February whatever in that reckoning. See, I can't even do it in my head. So a leap second is the same kind of concept in the, in the idea that it's correcting our calendars to make things match up, but it's not related to the leap year at all. It's purely adjusting for the variable rotation of the Earth to make a day last a day.